Yo, what's going on everyone? Today is a momentous day as this will be the very first character showcase video I ever do for Dragolia Lost. Today's character we'll be looking at is right here on the screen, Ezilith. This character is very controversial because she was the very first character in the game to have a raid up because of which a lot of new players have access to this character from re-rolling or just luck sacking her, whatever way they got them. And with that, since new players have access to this character, they tend to, I guess, ignore their other characters and only want to use this character. But because of that, they end up dying a lot <laughs> because this character is very finicky. I, I, we'll talk more when we get to our other things, but this character is very infamous for being a character where you see her die in 10 seconds. <laughs> and because of that, that's why people tend to hate this character, even though personally I like this character a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So just wanted to get that out the way. Uh, for people who play Grand Blue, if you know a character named Yule, she's pretty much the exact same character. Just that she's not a uh, furry. <laughs> so you, you do have something to appreciate if you play Grand Blue, because this character is pretty much the same thing. Now, let's talk about Ezilith. Ezilith, oh, Ezilith is a fire dagger support unit. Quote, unquote, support unit. So her main job is to buff, debuff. Quote, unquote. <laughs> that's what she's supposed to be doing and uh that's supposed to be her strongest aspect but when we talk about it we're gonna see that it's not like that now with Ezilith her main skill and her first skill is Howling Meteor Howling Meteor is a 11 hit combo move it's a very high commit move now with the first 10 hits of the move it does anywhere from 46% to 57% of your normal attack damage and the final hit doing anywhere from 203 all the way to 250. This skill you cannot do any other actions during it and it had a very long active time. So with this move you really have to be cautious when you use it against bosses and if you used at a bad time can get you killed. For example, using this skill during Midgard at the same moment he activates Tidal Tempest will get you killed as you have no way to dodge it. And you will be taking three hits to the face. <laughs> so do keep that in note when you, when you think about this skill. Now the SP cost for this skill is 2,400 Keep that in mind. SP cost is how much it takes to build up your skill. Her second skill and her support skill, I guess, is Brilliant Inferno. Brilliant Inferno is a buff skill and a debuff skill in one. Now, what it does is, upon using it, it activates Inferno mode. Now, Inferno mode asks, um, lashes from anywhere from 15 seconds um which is really good and on top of that you gain strength from anywhere from 10 to 15 depending on the level 10 is for the lowest level 15 for the highest while also allowing Ezilith to gain the ability to lower defense down on the opponent by 5% for 10 seconds with a very low chance of hitting do keep that in mind. It does not hit all the time. If you see in the clip in the top left corner, I missed four times in a row. It hits about 20% of the time, but it's very good because of the fact that Ezilith is a dagger user. So her ability to gain debuffs is very easily, uh, very easy, my fault. This is a skill based on my weapon. You, if you notice on this corner right here, it shows where you get the skills from. These skills are from the character while this skill is from the weapon. Just in case anybody was wondering. Now, with Ezilith, her co-op ability is critical hit rate. All dagger characters in the game currently only have access to critical hit rate. She starts at 5% and gains 1% for 
for the first three upgrades and on the last upgrade she would gain two percent capping her off at ten percent so do keep that in mind when it comes to ezalith that she starts at five and she caps off at ten now her main skills are coming from flurry deliberator this is a combo based skill depending on well after you hit 15 percent or uh, 15 combos she gives the ability to increase her chance of landing debuffs mainly from brilliant inferno her second skill being sleep resist and last skill being broken punisher if you guys have played grand blue fantasy think of it as break assassin if not it increases damage to enemies and the break state so that's after they are loose their full overdrive bar these two are from my prince and my dragon now let's go look at her mana circle so i don't know what's the best way to go about making these videos so do leave in the comments what you guys think uh, when it comes to stuff like that i don't really know and i am looking for feedback so i can improve these videos now with the mana circle i'm going to tell you my recommendations on how you should go about building the mana circle um don't forget that always the auto option but i don't recommend it if you're trying to min max your character and you don't have a lot of mana so on the first tier i recommend getting uh well on the first tier nothing really that important to get uh flurry deliberator will be the last skill i recommend getting though because flurry deliberator does not have any uh well access or you cannot access this skill because he has no debuffs until the second tier so this will be the last skill i recommend you getting probably want to start out with four strike if anything but this skill should be the last skill you get upon getting to the second tier i recommend instantly unlocking brilliant inferno if you can as that makes flurry deliberator not a dead skill so you want to instantly get to that the other skills are just stat boost so you can go about any order you want now we get to the third tier now the third tier is a little bit different now i'm going to recommend going after broken punisher instantly if you are a person who uses ezilith mainly for bossing the broken punisher is going to give you a 20 percent damage boost 25 my fault damage boost so it's going to be very crucial for bossing as it's a good kill when the boss goes into break if you're not into that and you more use ezilith for mobbing i recommend you go instantly after upgrading howling meteor which is over here my fault howling meteor now you get a more a little bit more damage on howling meteor which is your main mobbing skill so if you're going with that route howling meteor what you want to go with first Fl flurry deliberator is to be your last skill it only increases the chance of you landing debuffs a little bit more it's not that important you get a five percent boost to it i don't think that is something you should prioritize that's my opinion you don't have to follow this advice if you don't like it now we get to the fourth mana circle and this becomes a little bit more crucial depending on what type of content you're going after if you're farming on sloth i will recommend the first thing you do is get sleep resist sleep resist allows you to do the win on sloth quest without having to worry about getting the sleep debuff now normally you would have 50 percent if you're on mana circle three but getting to this mana node instantly allows you to get a hundred percent and completely ignore that debuff making the onslaught quest a lot easier so i'll definitely recommend getting this if you're planning on farming that secondly i will recommend upgrading brilliant inferno because i don't find force strike to be that important so that's my opinion you may want to upgrade force strike but i recommend getting brilliant inferno level two next lastly getting force strike um i always stress that the stat boost unless you're trying to increase your might are the last thing you get if you're low on mana upon reaching the final tier i'll recommend upgrading howling meteor first if you can it is a costly upgrade um 
so you may not want to do it but i would recommend upgrading howling meteor afterwards you could also upgrade broken punisher broken Pun broken punisher is a lot easier to upgrade so you'll probably have an easier time with unlocking that first but i recommend howling meteor as it would give you a really big boost especially to your might so if you're trying to increase your might it's a very good way about increasing your overall might now that's her mana circle please please tell me if there's any way i can improve this and um let's get to a fight with midgard and i'll be right back okay so now i don't really know the best way on showcasing characters i'm going to for this run only use Ezolith, please in the comments give me feedback on what do you think is the best way of me showcasing these characters. So I showcase them solo, in a group, with support units, attacking units. What do you guys think? What quest do you think is the best? I'm doing Midgard because honestly, I find this quest to be one of the harder dragons to fight. It's a quest where you have to respect the boss. You can't just flail attack like a mad nut. Unless you're like not aggro, and in which case you can like this like throw buttons out. But when you're gonna be the last guy alive, sometimes you gotta learn how to play the game. So because of that, we're doing Midgard. I'm gonna try to focus on the fight because the fight can be a little bit taxing if you don't know what he's going to do. I got hit. Now he's gonna shoot his gun at me. <laughs> it's not a gun, but his laser beam. <laughs> I have quite a little bit of experience fighting this thing. Not the most. I will have the most experience with something like uh, Brunhilda because of Lily. But Lily just kind of like blows through the boss with like no effort. As I mentioned, this one tackle is all it takes for him to stun you. So you really have to be paying attention in this fight. It's also another reason why I'm not doing 9k because of the fact that it's so uh, crucial, I guess. To, to, pl to play on point that you get punished really bad if you happen to get stunned and then he happens to uh want to hit you with his his uh what's it called tidal tempest so i'm trying to avoid that right now let's go take out the mobs really quick so with dagger you can see that as has so much range that it's really really good when it comes to trying to burst it down. Little tip, you can attack him during that. Even though he's in the air, you would think you won't be able to, but you can. So long as you keep track of that, you'll be really fine. Oh, I was expecting him to do a different attack. Like right here, you see that this can get me killed. If this was not, if it was 9k, I'll be dead right there, by the way. The reason I'm not doing it, because I'll be really annoyed. Definitely won't hit me. So right there, you see that I did the full combo. So with Ezreal's full combo, you do get a jump back attack. The jump back attack can be used to dodge. If you know how to time it well enough. So little things like that can make a big difference here. Now, I'm going to be doing a little bit different combo. With the four strike combo. It's after the fifth hit, you want to charge up your force strike. It's the maximum damage you can get on a dagger character right now. Oh, I think I'm, I think I'm stunned. Oh fuck! I want to pay attention. Help! 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 <laughs> I was going to hope to avoid using dragon if I could, but I suck. And well, <laughs> I'm gonna use dragon to make up for my badness. Do forgive me. That wasn't the most clean gameplay of it but i hope you guys get an understanding of it i'm sorry for my bad gameplay i, I should i should improve myself it is a little bit hard sometimes playing on the emulator but hopefully you guys enjoyed the video if you have any questions leave them in the comments i'll try to uh get back to you guys and please tell me how i can improve my videos thank you I'll see you guys next time